Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the ICCM Life Givers Dinner. Won't you please welcome to the stage Joshua Edmond. And I would like to say to everyone, welcome to ICCM's Life Givers Dinner. Yes. Now, how many of you all are like me, and this is your first time? Your first time. I see your hands. I see. Okay, I see your. Yes, yes, yes. Throw your hands in the air, yes, and wave them like you just, okay. Uh, we are so delighted and excited that you're here. In fact, can we give the newcomers a round of applause? Yes, so if this is your first time here, or maybe you've been here a number of times, we just want to say welcome to you. Here's what I believe. I believe God is going to speak to you in profound and powerful ways. I believe that we're going to see what God has been doing, what he will do as well through ICCM. So as uh, the good bishop, T.D. Jakes, would say, get ready, get ready, get ready. Welcome to ICCM's Life Givers Dinner. Hey, can you help me welcome Jim to the stage? Let's welcome him at this time. Night. What an opportunity uh, to be here tonight on what God's doing in the city of Minneapolis. Amen? Amen. So I'll bless the food, but I want to say a special prayer on tonight also, right? Father, we thank you for this food. We ask you bless it to our body. We thank you for everyone here that's serving the food. We ask you to bless them, Lord. Touch them special like only you can. We thank you from the AV to the, the people serving outside, to the people inside serving. We just thank you, Lord. Just lift them up, Father. And Lord, we give this night to you, Father. Have your way in us, Father. We're here to come against the darkness and the principalities that fight against this world. And we're here to stand in agreement together tonight, Lord, physically and financially, to support your kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for this evening. Have your way tonight, Father, and we thank you for what you're going to do tonight. Bless each and every one of us coming in and coming out. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. We made it 29 years. 29 years. <laughs> they, they said we couldn't do it. But we did it. But we did it. Won't God do it? God can do it, right? <laughs> We just want to say thank you, everybody, for coming to our annual Life Givers Dinner. I can't tell you how humbling it is that you would take a night out of your busy life to spend with us. Right, honey? Yeah, it's just a beautiful. Um, just give yourselves a hand to clap because you look so good. <laughs> so good. Thank you for coming. You know, at this time, um, we really just want to say thank you to everybody and recognize some there's been so many people who've been key to our to the success of the Life Center. I can't say our success. It's our our success together. And uh, But first of all, I just want to say thank you to all of our current and past board members. Would you guys just give a quick stand to your feet? Current and past board members. And see the Stigmans back there and Jonas. And yes, thanks, you, you guys, so much. Thank you so much. You know, um, Brad, these, these guys these days don't know what it was like back in the, in the early days, right? <laughs> when Ray talked you into being our board member, right? <laughs> thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. Um, we also just want to thank um, all of our business sponsors who've, who've been a part of our Life Center and joined our team. We had a great bike tour this year, right? It's awesome. And, and this was the first year we had one of our largest um, b uh, business sponsors, um, Purpose Driven Restoration. I just want to give a big shout out to them. Thank you so much. And speaking of the bike tour, I just want to thank all of our current and past cycle riders and support team, you guys. Would you guys stand? Anyone who's been on the bike tour with us? We got some more, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, uh, it's amazing. Now, uh, 330 miles in four days, right? And um, 
I don't know what our youngest writer was, probably Carl. Carl, wherever you are, somewhere over there. But this year, um, Randy Lawson turned 70 years old. And Charlie turned 70, so hey, you know what? Anyone can ride this. It's that easy, right? <laughs> Thanks, you guys. By the way, I don't want to take too much time, but because of our bike tour this year, we purchased a brand new 2022 15-passenger van. So, <laughs> woo! Yeah, well. That was a first. Right. Long uh, way from uh, Faith Van and Bullet Van and Bullet <laughs> Junior. <laughs> um, I also want to acknowledge if you are part of our Friday night street team, if the, uh, you can have, stand up and let us see. Friday night street team, people that are faithful to go out. Better than the postman, it could be raining, it could be snowing, and, uh, and they're still going. Amen. You know, I just want to, we already talked about first-time visitors, but we would like to thank you for coming one more time. And so if you were, if this is your first time at a Life Givers Dinner, would you just wave your hand real quick one more time so we can, wow, there's a lot of you guys. Man. Awesome. We are so grateful to have you. And it goes without saying, we are talking a lot, we will be talking a lot about the LifeHouse Project. And we are honored today to have our business partners, Roots Property Management, who've come alongside of us. Roots team, would you guys stand in the middle there? You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. These guys have grabbed a hold of our vision for helping families and creating a safe and healthy place. And they are working hard. And I'm so grateful. Thank you, Amber and team. You guys are awesome. Um, and then speaking of the Life House, we seem like we can't hit a nail on the wall without our friends from Van Min Construction. So give it up for Van Min Construction. Right. Adam and Jack, I don't know where you guys are. Stand up. There you are. Thank you so much. Love and appreciate you guys. And now, I guess that's about it, right? I need voice of God the to tell me what to do. The voice of God is up next. The voice of God. <laughs> anyway, enjoy your dinner. The choir's coming up soon. God is on me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and freedom to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of God in vengeance, to comfort all who mourn. They will rebuild in ancient ruins. They will restore the former devastations. They will renew the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Isaiah 61, 1, 2, and 4.
Ladies and gentlemen, get ready to celebrate with the ICCM Life Center. in the field I'm blessed going out I'm blessed coming in He's gonna open up a window and pull you out of My name is Deja Nelson, and my pastor asked me to give my testimony tonight. Amen. All right. Um, so I grew up as an only child in Fridley, Minnesota. Um, it was just me and my mom. My dad was sentenced to over 10 years um, in the federal penitentiary when I was two. Um, my grandma was my mom's uh, support system, and she passed away when I was five. Um, my mother struggled with her mental health, bipolar disorder, anxiety, depression. Um, there was a lot of mental, mental and uh, physical abuse in our household. Um, my grandma passed away when I was five, and... A few months later, her boyfriend molested me. Um, and then at 14, my mom decided to have another baby. She had a little girl, my little sister. Um, when my sister was one month old, my mom took us to my dad's house for the weekend and she went home and passed away from a diabetic coma. Um, so we went to go live with our fathers. 
Um, right after my mom passed away, I ended up getting pregnant. My dad was in prison on a parole violation. And from prison, he signed a paper saying I had to get an abortion. Um, and so it was, it was really rough growing up with my dad. We, um, my dad was dating women who would prostitute themselves for him. And um, he would teach me how to steal and all these other things. Um, when I was 17, I ran away. I came back and I was pregnant with my little boy and I told my dad I'm having my baby. Um, me and my son, we were homeless for eight months um, just because I had rather been homeless than to go home with my dad. Um, when we got a place, later on that month, um, he passed away, my son from SIDS, Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. Um, and I remember uh, in the midst of that, it was a guy from high school and he wrote me and he said, hey Deja, um, it was about one o'clock in the morning, he's like, hey Deja, uh, God gave me a dream. And in the dream he revealed to me that you're very distraught about your son's death. Um, and he was saying, you know, um, we just, you know, sometimes we're not gonna always understand the ways of God, you know. Um, and so, and he was like, you know, but he has great things in store for you. And he also showed me that your next baby will be a baby girl. Um, and so in 2017, I gave birth to that baby girl. Um, but before I gave birth to her, um, um, I couldn't sleep after my son passed away. And one day someone offered me a Xanax bar and at 18, that led to a pretty bad addiction. Um, and I remember telling God one day, I'm like, you know, uh, this is just unbearable. My life has been unbearable. Uh, and they say, you have good things for me, but you can't make me stay here. And I proceeded to take 23 Xanax bars that night and I waited to die. Um, I didn't go to sleep for three days after that. Um, because God, God wanted me here. He, he has me here for a purpose. He has called me, he has anointed me. Um, and so after having my baby girl, when she was about uh, six months, I had another near-death experience. Um, and God decided to reveal himself to me. Jesus showed up and he saved me repeatedly. He continues to save me. He continues to remind me that he is sovereign. He continues to promise me that my latter days will be greater than my former days and that he's doing a new thing in my life. Um, I recently graduated discipleship. Yeah. Recently graduated discipleship. I, um, I found the Life Center in the midst of my addiction. I remember being surrounded by darkness. I don't know how I got there. I don't know why I was there. I don't know who brought me there. But I remember um, just being in one of the seats and it was like this light from literally as if God had opened the heavens and penetrated this, this, this darkness that, was, that, that had me captive. And he, it was just, it was the presence of God and he, he penetrated that, you know? And so um, when I, after having the encounter with Jesus, I'm like, I wanna go back there. I don't know what that was, but I want some of that. And I couldn't find it, and I was living in Brooklyn Park, and I couldn't find it, I couldn't find it. Um, and my neighbor was like, well, just come to my church. And I'm like, I don't want your church, I want that church. But in, in desperation, I went with her, and it just so happened to be the Life Center. Yeah. Um, and being at ICCM has just been life-changing for me and my daughter. And um, God is gonna continue to take us from glory to glory to glory. God is a strong tower in which the righteous run into and are safe, you know? Um, and now I'm safe. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sean Johnson. Tell a joke, did I? Hold on, okay. All right. So I've been asked to give my testimony. So as a child, I was abused by my dad and then neglected at the age of 12, and I grew up in foster care from then on to 17. 
I was addicted to, for, uh, to drugs and alcohol for 26 years or so. I attempted to quit many times on my own, going to treatment several times, and, and never succeeded. I recently joined discipleship about a year ago, and I, and I graduated last month. Thank you, thank you. It wasn't easy for me, but I've learned who I am and whose I am to be, to be a vessel for others to follow Christ. Currently, I'm working at a detox on the south side of Minneapolis. Thank you. So, 19 years ago on my 21st birthday, I woke up in detox, that very same de detox for the first time ever. I, I had a orange suit on and uh, never thought in a million years that I'd be working there. So, so since I've been working there, I got this newfound passion to further my education so I can attain an LADC to become a counselor. To freely give what's been given to me, a sense of hope to lost souls in addiction, God's will, not mine. Recently, I got approved for an apartment right next door to the church. At the Life House, y'all. Oh, man. I, I, I've been going from glory to glory to glory. Oh, man. So I, oh, man. Thank you. It's only his will. Look, I can keep on going, but I know I got a time limit. But uh, cause the clock is watching me, right? So uh, I'm just grateful. I'm honored and privileged to be here, and I'd like to thank my, my spiritual mother and father, Pastor Monica and Pastor Chris, for, uh, for their vision that has, uh, you know, 29 years ago, I was probably 11 years old. I never thought about this, you know what I mean? Like, you know, uh, but I'm just grateful for this process, and uh, I, I want to help people the best way I can, and the only way I can do it is by putting God first. And, and, and the very same apartment, I'm, I've lived in a few apartments, and I've never had an apartment with the number one. So, so God's telling me, put God first. So I'm going to keep it simple and keep coming back. I love y'all. Sing it, sing it. Oh, Jesus. They'll get it. They'll figure it out. We got professionals working tonight. <laughs> Maybe not. Red mic. Oh, you're on. Check, check. There, there you go. Is. I could have gave you my mic. That's all right. See, you didn't do it, though. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. So, a few. Feel me? <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about restoration, and uh, and I think back to our original building that that we bought, our first building. And I don't know if many of you probably don't know how that went, but it was it went up for auction, and uh, me and my husband took five thousand dollars. We had five thousand dollars, and that's it. And we thought we could come and buy that forty thousand square foot building, and. Uh, when we walked in the room, there were developers and all these other people that had blueprints. That was more money than, than what we came to buy the building. And 
Uh, so the bidding started at five, but it didn't end there. It just kept going and going and going, and and um, we're doing the math as it keeps going, and uh, we had to have 20% down, and, and we got to 70,000. My husband said, that's it. We can't do another bid, and, but I'm upset because I know that's my building. <laughs> and I'm looking at those guys going, you know, that's my building. They could care less, but... Uh, Anyway, I said, please, one more bid, because uh, it was our building. And so he bid seven, 75, and, uh, and, and I'm going to tell you the truth. The bidding was going, 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 going. When, but when the man said 75, and he said going once, twice, sold, I looked at my husband. I said, who bought that building? And he said, you did. You did. <laughs> You're Not the, me, you did. You're the proud owner of a 40,000 square foot dump. And so the restoration started with sledgehammers. It didn't cost much for a dumpster and a sledgehammer. And we tore everything out of there. And, uh, and you were there too. Yes, sir. Uh, and sometimes it was just my husband. And I would say, why don't you just come home? And he said, no, as long as we keep moving, if it's one brick at a time, we just keep moving. And it was right before we were going to do our opening, and, and my husband decided to cut a tree, a big tree, cut a branch off of it, which was like at the top of our building. And uh, he, hit, he cut it, but um, lumberjacks would know this. It's a kickback, and they call it a widow something because it hits... It, um, it, it hit him in the face, and he fell out of the tree with the chainsaw and landed on his back. But I didn't know any of this because I'm inside, and we didn't have windows at that time. <laughs> and uh, a guy comes in, one of our, our staff, and he shuts the door, and I'm thinking the man lost his mind because we didn't shut doors. And, I'm thinking, and I don't know what he's going to say, but I'm looking at him, and he goes, L now listen. He goes, uh... I didn't want to tell you because I didn't want you to get upset. And he said, but your husband fell out of a tree. And I'm like, where is he? He goes, he's gone. The ambulance came and took him. And I'm, and I'm furious now. My husband's laying out on the ground. An ambulance is out there. And you don't want to tell me because you don't want me to get upset? Are you out of your mind? I was crazy. I left the building and I ran to the Hennepin County and I wa and I ran to the I had security guard and, and I said, I want to see Chris De Laurentiis. And he, he looked, he said, no, you can't go in there. And, and I stepped back and I said, Lord, what am I, what do I say to this man and still preach tomorrow? <laughs> and the Lord gave it to me. I looked them dead in the eyes, and I said, if your wife was in there, do you think you'd stop and be talking to me? He slid me a pass. <laughs> and so I went to find my husband, and uh, he heard me. He didn't see me, but he heard my footsteps. He recognized my footsteps, and he said, is that you, honey? And when I got up to him, I saw him, and he was in a full traction neck. His face, the side, was scraped off, and a uh, bone was shattered by his eye, and he had blood coming out of everywhere. And my only thought was, what are we doing? We, we're working so hard. Is this worth it? And we looked at each other, and we just started praying, and we're calling. We're thinking about all the lives that have been changed at that point. We're naming them Cheryl and, and, and Charlie and this and that, and we're just naming them and naming them. And we just uh, been doing that for the last 29 years. <laughs> and in those 29 years, there's about... 30,000 plus families that have crossed our doors and have um, found the love of Jesus Christ and, and restoration and life change. You know, we found that 
for the last 29 years that renovation of old buildings and renovation of lives seem to go together, <laughs> right? Restore the ancient ruins. Yeah, um, it seems like where others um, see loss and discouragement, um, God just blessed us with the opportunity to see opportunity where, where others just didn't. I mean, when we first started um, in the house on Bloomington Avenue, we had crack houses behind us and bootleggers. Uh, we bought that house for so cheap, I'm embarrassed to tell you, but we, we, bought, <laughs> no two other, we bought two other <laughs> houses on that block for 5000 a apiece. People were running away from our block, but we're running in, yep. right? That's what we do. From our house and to, the, and to what God had done there as, as little Vicky who was singing up there, she was just a teenager that we pulled in off the street and, and she was there in that house and her family and, and all of those lives and stories that happened from that first house. And then you talked about the Life Center, the, the, that, the, the miracle that God did there. Um, we were, that was the ugliest building on the block. It was abandoned for 20 years. You know, I mean, nobody wanted it. And um, it was, it was, it had water from the ceiling to the floor. Squatters, <laughs> squatters got grossed out living there. Yeah. I mean, Dick, Dick Vanman came to look at the building and, uh, but he originally looked at it and told us that go ahead and buy it or go, we already owned it, but the, do the work, but uh, near the end of that work, he's running through the building going, this is God, this <laughs> is God, this is God, because he sees it all done. And I'm like, when wasn't it God? When wasn't it God? When wasn't it God? And he said, I have to tell you, I didn't think this could happen, but I didn't want to discourage you. And, uh, but God. Amen. And now today, it's one of the finest buildings on the block and in the neighborhood. And we host events for all kinds of organizations and blessing. We're blessing our community through that place. And lives are being touched. Then a few years ago, we were, we were just, we were, it was just before COVID and we're staring at that, that empty grass across the street. Which we claimed for yep. 20 years. Well, you did. I, I, did. I think I... I think I was kind of tired, but <laughs> but that was our lot. That was uh, it was it was grass and chain link fence for as long as we had been there, and and Monica said, I, you know, it's time for us to find out what's going on there. And the next thing you know, within two years, we're able to purchase those three lots and develop it. It was amazing, the miracle on 18th Street. On those lots, we've had hip hop jam on the hab, we've had outreaches, we've had kids camps. Lives have been changed through the renovation of that Amen. lot, you know. And then, literally last year, when we were when they were planting the trees, um, as we're finishing up the development of that lot, that's when the life house came to happen, right? Right. It was amazing. Well, that's another building that I was claiming, but you weren't here in it. I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, the whole neighborhood was saying that's Why your building. Why does ministry <laughs> have to take so much work? That's what I want to know. <laughs> but a woman came out of the house. She was uh, the, the manager at that time, and she said, oh, I heard you bought, you're buying the building. And I said, I'm not buying the building. And she goes, oh, somebody's buying the building. I overheard somebody's buying the building. She goes, I just assumed it was you. And, uh, and I ran to my husband. I said, somebody's buying my building. <laughs> you got to call the guy. And, uh, and he did. And, and the guy said if, if he had his choice, he would give it to the Life Center. The, um, and so last year at the banquet at the Life Givers Dinner, we were able to raise the final money that we needed to purchase the building. Amen. And uh, praise the Lord. We actually raised a little extra so we can get going with some of the renovations as well. And so now we're one year later and we are, we're up to our neck in it. Yeah. And you can fill in the it. Yeah. 
Amber and Joseph from Roots Property Management, we're up to our neck in it, aren't we, right? <laughs> and, um, and we are seeing God begin to do some amazing things. Um, this has been no simple project, as in this building that we bought, it had lots of drugs going on, drug dealing, prostitution. And so we've just made a commitment that we're going to see God through all of us together. We're going we're gonna to see God create a safe yes. and healthy place for families yes. and individuals who are changing their life. Amen? And like so, hallelujah. We now, so Sean, Sean is moving in in a couple weeks, right? Graduate. And um, we've already got, we've already got Darjan who lives in there. We've Re got Reggie. Reggie who lives in there. We got a Tyrone. And so already we're beginning to turn that place around. As, as, built, as units become available, we begin to fix them up, rehab some. Some of them we're just fixing up so that we can get people in there quickly. And so tonight, um, Portia's going to come in a second. And, um, but she's going to be, at the end of, at the end of her sharing tonight, um, we're going to be taking an offering because we need to raise $150,000 just for the Lifehouse project, and also 100000 for our regular budget for the ongoing ministry. So as you are thinking about God, you've done so much, <laughs> and so many people have worked so hard. Maybe you can think about where your place might be in that picture. I don't think the amount is as important as just hearing from God and what he wants us to do. And it's all about restoring lives. It is. Seeing uh, God do miracles. All these people up here are miracles. And, and there's more back at the ranch. <laughs> before, before Portia comes up, we're going to show last year's video about the Life House one more time because there's so many new people here. Thank you so much. We love and appreciate you. God bless you. Back in 1993, Monica and I, we were having breakfast at a coffee shop. We wanted to make an impact in our neighborhood. Behind us were drug dealers. We had crack houses, prostitution on Bloomington Avenue, and, and we had bought a duplex in the neighborhood. And we were just dreaming of what God can do uh, to change our city. And so we said, well, let's start a church in our house. And we started bringing in people from the shelter, from the streets, from the corners, into our home where they can find Jesus and they can start building community and their lives can begin to change. We've been praying about 1818 Park, 20 units, right next door to the Life Center since we bought the original building. We had done so much outreach in there. Monica's team's visiting the other month you were doing ministry out there, right. and the caretaker came out, and what happened? She said, I heard you're buying the building. And, uh, and I'm thinking, I'm not, we're not buying the building. And I said, is it for sale? And she goes, well, I overheard a conversation that they're selling it to someone, and I just figured it was you. I run to my husband and tell him about it, and yeah, so we called our, our friends who are real estate brokers. They found the owner, reached out to him, and immediately finding out the owner was a Christian, and, and he goes, oh, I love that ministry. We signed a purchase agreement. We have an offer. Everything is moving forward. You know, one of the biggest struggles that we have in the ministry is we'll help people in the homeless shelter. They'll come to the ministry. We'll start getting in our programs. And then they'll move out and they'll move into a, a building that's really struggling and there's drug dealing and there's craziness going on. And it just, it makes it so hard as people get pulled back to a life that's detrimental. This apartment building is going to allow us to create a safe, a healthy, sober, affordable environment. 
for people who are rebuilding their lives. We're going to call it the Life House. <laughs> it's going to be a place where people find life, a new life in their home. It's so true. Um, people relapse and uh, and I feel that having a building, and especially a building right next door, people would be surrounded by other good people and, uh, and you know, you, you become what you surround yourself with. And they don't have much opportunity in other housing to surround themselves with better people. The project will cost uh, $2,200,000. Uh, that would include all of the renovation to bring the building up to a standard that we think would be healthy and, um, and, and good for our community. We're hoping by the end of 2021, we'll have raised $400,000 toward the down payment of this building. I know that this seems like an impossible task to raise this kind of money again, but that's what we said just a few years ago when the parking lot opportunity came forward. We saw God provide. When I think of from the very beginning how whatever we seem to have spoken, oh, that make a great place for a church to how it went at the auction. We could do one more bid and, and, and these people were bidding hard against us and, and I just said one more bid and the room went silent. It's like God just shut their mouth because that was our building. And, uh, and I know that was the same for our parking lot. And I know it's the same for this building next door. God has a plan and a purpose for our ministry, for the Life Center, where we do life together. And, and this home next door is just like another piece in the puzzle. There it is taking us to the next level. God's hand over the city, especially after trying times of that we have just went through with the George Floyd, with, um, with uh, COVID and everything else. Uh, God's timing is perfect. And it's time to have a home. And that's right next door. You know, what I love best about that video is that tonight we're celebrating that that building is owned by the Life Center, right? <laughs> Pastor Chris and Monica, I love that you made the comparison between lives being renewed and renovated and buildings being renewed and renovated because they're very, very similar. And before I go any further, for those of you that I haven't met yet, my name is Portia Allen, and it is my honor to be standing before you this evening to continue to celebrate what God has done and to also to invite you to be a part of what God is doing at the Life Center. And so I was asked tonight, I was like, how long have you been involved with the Life Center? I had to stop and think and do the math. My husband and I have been in Minnesota for 10 years and I used to be on staff at a local church and the position that I had allowed me to be introduced to the Life Center. And so that's been about eight years that I have had the opportunity to be a part of outreaches and to be out on street teams and to be a part of different church services. And I think it was in February or March or April, earlier this year, that I said to Pastor Chris and Monica, I said, I think it's time for me to become more involved. And they're like, really? <laughs> I was like, yes, it's time for me to become more involved. And so as of September, I officially became part of the board. And um, I'll tell you that the Life Center board is not one of those that just looks good on your resume. When you're on the board, you work. <laughs> but I think those are the best kinds of boards, right? Because if you're gonna be a part of something, if you're gonna say that you're a part of something, be a part of it, be a part of it, be about it, right? I wanna read to you again the scripture that we started this evening with. It came out of Isaiah 61, verses one, two, and four. The spirit of the Lord is on me. 
the spirit of the Lord is on the life center because the Lord has anointed the life center to bring good news to the poor. He has sent the life center to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and freedom to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of God's vengeance to comfort all who mourn. They will rebuild the ancient ruins. They will restore the former devastations. They will renew the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. You saw on your chair when you came in a paper that said, restore and renew. God is restoring and renewing lives by the hundreds. You heard them say over the 29 years, thousands and thousands and thousands of lives have been impacted. And I believe truly you have just scratched the surface of what God is about to do in and through the Life Center because of the Life House. The main purpose that I am standing up here tonight is to tell you about the why. Why are we here? Is it to dress up? I mean, that's cool. I like to dress up. I've eaten lots of vegetables to dress up for you tonight. <laughs> Is it to come and have amazing food? I don't know if I've had finer chicken. That was really good, y'all. The potatoes, what? Is it for the testimonies? Because the testimonies of life change, Deja, Sean, hey guys, God is just starting with what he's doing. And I can't see you, I'm looking out to where you are, but hear me, because this is what the enemy likes to do. When you share what God has done in your life, the enemy likes to whisper that that's not real. That's really not real what God did. But I'm here to tell you tonight that what God has done in you, he's gonna continue to show himself faithful to you. And when the enemy comes and tries to lie to you and say that it is not real what God has done in your life, you remind him that you were overcoming because of the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony that you shared tonight in front of all of these people. Thank you so much for sharing. So yes, we come to hear the testimonies. We come to dance and sing with the choir. Choir, thank you for leading us in worship because every word that they sing, it is a testimony of what God has done. It is not just music for the sake of music. It is declarations of what God has done and what he is doing in our lives. That's why we sing. Guess what? You don't even have to carry a tune to sing, right? But you can declare with your voice what God has done. We are here for those things. But really why we are here is because we want to fill the house. I wanna to talk to you from Luke 11, 24 through 26. Don't worry, I'm not gonna be here long. This is what the word says. When an unclean spirit comes out of a person, it roams through waterless places looking for rest. And not finding rest, it then says, I'll go back to my house that I came from. Returning, it finds the house swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits more evil than itself and they enter and settle down there. As a result, that person's last condition is worse than the first. So I wanna ask you, what would happen if the Life Center, Pastor Chris and Monica, they purchased this building and they just left it? What would have happened if 29 years ago when they purchased the Life Center itself, they bought it and just left it? What would happen if a life comes to know the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, but then we just throw them back out there and say, be well, Hope you make it, right? We are here tonight to partner with a mission and a challenge because we want to fill the house. Jesus is talking about being intentional with a clean house, right? He comes and he saves us. We cannot be saved on our own. He comes and he saves us, but then there are steps that we take so that we can continue to walk in freedom. We continue, you heard Pastor Monica talking about, let's surround the people who come and know our Lord and Savior with other people that are gonna encourage them and say, keep going, you can do this, to remind everyone about the truth of God's word. Community is important. We want to fill the house with community. We want to fill the neighborhood with the light of Jesus Christ. We want to fill the city with the truth that God is still on his throne and he has not forgotten Minneapolis. I know there are some hard things that we are hearing about our city, but I'm here to remind you tonight that there is a place that has said, we are gonna fill the house. And they're filling the house not just with people to say that it's full, but people whose lives have been radically changed by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
I would be remiss if I did not say to you tonight, if you were here because you were invited, but you don't know this Jesus that we are talking about, it's time for you to fill your house. It's time for you to be set free. I'll tell you a story. I was thinking about this night, and I was praying, and I thought about my own testimony, and I'll be honest, my testimony is very different from the testimonies that we heard tonight. I was born in a preacher's house. I was raised in church. I have always known the love of God, and I have had godly parents my entire life. But can I tell you that the sin that I commit separates me from God just as much as any other addiction that we heard about in this room tonight? And I was confronted and I was asked the question, somehow connecting me to the Life Center, and I'm gonna be really honest and confess before you that in my heart I went, but that's not my story. Because it is really, really tempting to other ourselves, right? That's not my story. That's not what's going on with me. I'm different. And really what we mean is I'm better. And Holy Spirit had to talk to me and said, excuse me, what? Because the last I checked in my word, it says there's no one righteous, no, not one. And I had to confess before the Lord and say, God, forgive me. I thank you for my brothers and sisters, and I thank you for the opportunity that you've given me to come into partnership, to learn, and to celebrate, and to remember what you've brought me from. Because my life of sin separated me from you. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, whoever is in Christ becomes a new creation the old has gone and the new has come. So if you are in this room tonight and you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, today is your day of salvation. God's word says that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But wait, I thought this was a fundraising dinner. It is. But if you don't know our Lord and Savior, come on, join us. I didn't mean for that to come out as creepy as it sounded, my bad. I'm sorry, that sounded like join us, no. What I meant was join us, that's better, that's better. We wanna fill the house because we know that if we are intentional with filling both the in the natural, the life house, filling it with what needs to be there, doing the renovations that need to happen, making sure that there is a good quality of life for the residents there, in the same way, we want to make sure that every life is filled, filled with the word of God, filled with godly community, filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Because when we are intentional about being full, when, not if, when the enemy comes back to check out that house that is neat and put in order, he finds that it is not empty, but he finds it is full with something that he wants to run from. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom and the enemy cannot take you back. Once you are free, you are free indeed. Yes, you know the truth that God is speaking over you. So my friends, the reason why we are here is because we want to fill the house. I want to invite you to be a part of filling the house. Pastor Chris and Monica, they talked about not getting caught up in the number. My lead pastor says, don't do the math, do your part. It doesn't matter what your part looks like compared to the person that is sitting at your table or across the room. You do your part. You handle what God has asked you to do. Often my kids will tell me about each other and I'm like, mm, I think you're in control of you and not anybody else, right? So we are going to invite you. Look at your tables. In the center of your tables, there is an envelope. And in that envelope is where you're going to put your commitment cards. I'm not gonna read the card to you because I believe that you're all intelligent and literate people that are in the room but we are here to fill the house. And we fill the house when everybody here, we come together in partnership and we do it in a tangible way. We have been blessed to be a blessing. But my, my blessing can only be, don't do the math, do your part. It's not, this is God, this is God. It's always been God. Just like Pastor Monica said, they, <laughs> the buildings that the Life Center owns in the natural, it shouldn't have happened. It shouldn't have. Those who build a house on their own labor in vain. But if the Lord builds the house, the Lord is building this house. He's continuing to build it. He is continuing to do great things. And so we're gonna give you a few minutes 
to pray and to think. Some of you already came with a number in your mind and your heart, and you came on mission tonight because you know exactly what you're going to do. Some of you have a number in your heart, and you are submitting it to the Lord right now. God, is this what you want me to do, or does it need to be a different number? I trust you to be obedient to the things of God and to hear his voice. You can give online. You can give by pledging. You can give by mailing back a check if you still write those. No judgment if you still write checks. I like to write a check because it makes sure that I pay the bills. But I want to take a moment and just pray really fast because we are going to fill the house. Father, I thank you for your sons and daughters in this room. I thank you for the testimonies that we have heard tonight, and I thank you for those who have come with purpose that have said, yes, we are going to come into partnership with the Life Center and with the Life House so we can continue to see what God is going to do. Father, I thank you that all of our best efforts are nothing without you, and I thank you that you have turned your favor and your blessing over the Life Center. And I thank you that you are going to exponentially increase what happens here tonight. We thank you for $250,000. We thank you that you are moving right now. In Jesus' name. We're gonna give you a few minutes to fill out that information. After you've filled out your card, if you would please put it in the green envelope at the center of your table. And I will be right back with you shortly. Around and all I see a burning buildings, barren trees, hopelessness is starting to wreak havoc. The son of man, I know you see the deepest depths unknown to me. You have planted seeds among the ashes. You rebuild, you restore. All that's broken from the ruin. Yeah, you redeem, you return all that's stolen from your children. That's what you. still my anxious heart all that's gone is never lost Emmanuel is here and he is faithful so I won't let my praises stop I'll sing it from these rubble rocks cause I know you are good and you are able Whoa, you rebuild you restore
there, Brother James. If I could have your attention just for one more moment as we are winding down the evening. I'm going to invite Pastor Chris and Monica to come to the stage. Yes, that is right and good. Pastor Chris, you said something tonight that I think sometimes we forget. It is, it is easy, I think, to sometimes celebrate the testimonies and the victories and to forget that ministry is hard. People are messy. I know because I'm messy, <laughs> right? Just sometimes we do a good job of cleaning up our mess so that others don't see it but you all have served faithfully for 29 years. And we're gonna pray for them and we're gonna bless them. Not because they're not blessed, not because people haven't been praying for them, but there is something supernatural that happens when we agree together and pray for these two that are taking Minneapolis for the kingdom of God. So if you'll join me in praying. Father, we bless pastors Chris and Monica. We bless them for their faithfulness. We bless them for not being afraid. We bless them for the moments when they have been afraid, they have looked to you. We bless them because they have been a beacon of who you are, God. We bless them because they speak the truth. We bless them because they do discipleship. We bless them because they have taught your people how to live, how to thrive, and how to turn around and reach out to others. We bless them because it hasn't been a ministry about them. It has always and will ever be about who you are. Jesus, your word says that if we will lift you up, that you would draw all men to yourself. And we bless Pastor Chris and Monica because they lift up the name of Jesus. We bless them because they walk in the authority of your Holy Spirit. We bless them because when they walk down the street, the atmosphere shifts because of the authority that rests on their life. We bless them, God, because they have given you everything. They have not held back one thing. We bless them for the moments that we don't see when they are in their prayer closets going, God, we don't know if we can go further. And you have sustained them and you have kept them. We bless them for their endurance. We bless them for their faithfulness. Because of them, God, we see you better. We have seen your heart for the lost. We have seen your heart for the broken. We have seen your heart for the disillusioned. God, I thank you for what you have done and what you are doing. God, I believe that the latter is going to be greater than the former for the life center. In the name of Jesus, we are calling out to every corner of Minneapolis. God, every group that it seems like it is impossible for them to know the Lord. God, I thank you that because of the Life Center and the Life House, that revival is coming to this city. God, I thank you that a city that is tempting to write it off because of the negative things that have happened, you have not forgotten Minneapolis. You are a God of the impossible. Yes. Nothing is too hard for you. So God, we bless your servants, your son and your daughter. Everything that their hands touch, God, is blessed because they belong to you. God, I thank you that no weapon formed against them has prospered or will prosper in the future. They have been covered and sealed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, for what you have done and what you are doing. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. amen. Well, this is one of the few banquets where we try to get you out early. So we succeeded. <laughs> I want to thank I want to thank Jim McMahon, wherever you are, Jim, for uh, being our banquet chairman. 
fourth year straight. Thank everybody for coming. Please go to the back table. Um, I think my daughter's selling coffee back there, plus uh, Nikita. And um, just enjoy the rest of the evening. God bless you. See you next year for our 30th anniversary.